Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you, Miss. <clears throat> uh, good evening, my dear children. Uh, I'm Rifka Rao, uh, your history teacher. And I'm so happy to see you all here today in the history session. Okay, so grade nine is one of the, uh, again, one of the most important grade because uh, in the grade nine, whatever the lessons that we have in history, especially, many more lessons are there in grade 11 also. So because of that, children, if you understand the lessons in grade nine, right, clearly, then when you go to grade 11, it will be the, the lessons will be very, very easy. Okay, so that's what the grade nine lessons are very important uh, for the O level also. Okay, children, so today I have chosen to teach you the very first lesson in your syllabus, that is capture of the coastal areas of Sri Lanka by the Dutch. So children, this lesson, right, it is consist of many parts. So today I have a limited time. So because of that one, I'm going to teach you a few part, a very uh, few part in this lesson. So when I take this lesson, children, now the first part we have arrival of the Dutch in Asia. And secondly, we have the Candian king seeking the support of the Dutch. And third, the battles of driving the Portuguese and establishment of Dutch power in the coastal areas. And the relationships of the Dutch with the Candian kingdom. And lastly, the administrative, economic, social, and cultural affairs during the Dutch rule. So today, I'll not be able to complete the whole lesson, but I'm hoping to complete the first three parts of this lesson. That is, how the Portuguese, right? What, how the, uh, the Dutch is, chasing the Portuguese out of the island and how they are establishing their power in the coastal areas of Sri Lanka. So I'm going to cover up up to that. I'm hoping to cover up up to that. So now let's go to the lesson children. Okay. Right. So the first thing that we need to understand, so in this one, first thing is, children, the arrival of the Dutch, right? Arrival of the Dutch. Now, we have to understand, history is a lesson, my dear children, which is the, we said it's a story, it's a chain of stories. Right? What we study in grade 6 also we have to remember. What we study in grade 7 also we have to remember. Because this is uh, going as a continuous story. So before I teach about this arrival of the Dutch to Asia children, now I would like to take you all little uh, to the grade 8. Okay? So children, grade 8, you, uh, we have studied a lesson called Renaissance, right? Renaissance. So you know that what is the major reason for the Renaissance to occur in Europe? Because there was a trading city named Constantinople, right? So, this Constantinople was captured by Ottoman Turks, right? This was captured by the Ottoman Turks. So, until that, how, what was the trading relationship with the Europe and the Asia? So, when we take the Europe, right? European countries and when it comes to the Asia, the European countries, they never, they have heard that there are 
very good like countries like india sri lanka there are countries in asia uh, in uh, where the commodities are like uh, very good uh, quality cinnamon is available uh, those countries are very famous for spices they are, they have heard but they have never uh, reached to the asia because there was no need for that one because the muslim traders right muslim traders they were obtaining the good from the asia and they were bringing that to the europe and in the constantinople was the main center where they did the trading activities so when the constantinople was captured by the ottoman turks there emerged a need these european countries to search for the asian countries okay so after that only they started to explore the world right after that only they started to explore the world okay so we know that one many nations right many nations they were in competition in searching the countries right we know that portugal right portugal the nation is portugal and the nationality right we call it as portuguese right they were very good explorers they were very good navigators okay we learn when we were in grade 8 that portugal right they were in forefront in searching the countries because there was a, a king named henry and he sponsored and there was a navigation school right so because of all these things right they had all the facilities to explore the world so even though there was a competition in the european countries like portugal right the other one is holland right holland is the uh, holland is the nation and the nationality we call them as the dutch right and the england right the england we call them as the british or english we call them as british or english and the france right france we call them as the french children so these countries were in competition in finding the asian countries right so even though all these four nations were in competition the portugal the portuguese right they were in the forefront in finding the asian countries right they were in forefront in finding the asian countries so in in grade 8 we have learned right how they arrived to sri lanka then how they entered into the affairs of sri lanka and how they established their trading power in sri lanka so before all these nations the portuguese were in the forefront in finding the asian countries so children the portuguese were right at the time they were obtaining the good from asian countries and they take back to the european countries and they sell that to the other european nations so because of that one the portuguese they had earned a huge amount of income okay children so this was the situation in europe at that time okay still we did not enter to our lesson right before i enter to the lesson whatever we have studied in our previous class i just i gave you a small introduction of it of it because you have to keep them in your mind and with that only you have to enter to today's session so that is what history is very important 
because whatever we are learning in our previous grades also we have to keep it in our mind because these are stories right the previous episode is a there is a connection with the previous episode and the present one and the present one also we have to remember because whatever we are going to learn in future whatever we learn in the past we have to take along with it okay children so that was the situation in the euro right so so in the 16th century in the 16th century in the portugal right in the portugal there was a famous harbor there was a famous harbor that harbor is the lisbon harbor right lisbon harbor okay so the dutch were engaged in the trade of buying at the lisbon harbor in portugal the spices and the other commodities that were brought by the portuguese from asia and selling them in the european countries so this is what the the portugal what they did this now here let us say asian countries are there so in the asian countries you know that one sri lanka india they all are very good at the commodities right the spices right so whatever the goods that they are collecting from the asian countries they bring that to the lisbon harbor in portugal so the other western nations are there no so they come to this lisbon harbor they collect the commodities from the lisbon harbor and they take back to their country so the dutch was also right so what is the nation of the dutch children right the people who live in uh, from which country we call them as the dutch uh they the dutch what is the nation of the dutch the very good very good uh, zainab holland right then they come to this lisbon harbor they collect the commodities from the lisbon harbor and they take back to the dutch so until that there was no need for the dutch to search for the asian countries because they are getting the goods from whatever they needed so until then there did not arise a need in search of the asian countries for the dutch okay children now the dutch is the you know, the holland right at the time the holland was a right a colony of the spain okay now colony means you all know children a country when it is under another nation then we say it as a colony so at the time this holland was a colony of spain okay so that means the holland is under the spain okay so in this situation children right again i have to take back to you guys to the grade eight. children we have learned that one in the european countries right in the european countries even though they all are christians they had different beliefs okay because at the beginning it was only roman catholics right roman catholics in the christianity they believe the roman catholics but later on during the renaissance a group of people right they realized that some teachings some preachings of this roman catholics are contrary to the teachings of the bible so they went against to the roman catholicism and they established a separate belief that we call it as a protestantism right protestantism so those who are believing the sorry those who are believing the roman catholicism we call them as roman catholics 
whereas who follow this protestantism we call them as the protestants yes very good amra okay right now children among this european countries one country they it was following the roman catholic and the other one was following the protestantism so there were religious controversies also between these nations okay so now keep that in your mind now let us come again to our story now i told you dutch is under the spain dutch the holland is a colony of spain okay so now here the spanish right we call them as the spanish means the people who live in the spain the nationality we call them as spanish they followed the right they followed which religion roman catholics they believe the roman catholics right whereas the dutch were protestants right so the spanish were roman catholics whereas the dutch were protestants so do you think that there will be a very good bond in between the spanish and dutch do you think yes they in a good no definitely no because they have the religious controversies right so this was the situation in europe at that time now at the time children the prince philip the 2 prince philip right right prince philip the 2 he was becoming the king of spain right he was becoming the king of spain at the same time he inherited the kingship of portugal also now which two nations are together now tell me which two nations are together now now again i'll tell you philip the 2 right he became the king of spain at the same time he inherited the kingship of portugal also yes very good zainab brukaya then spain and portugal now they are together right now always i used to tell you when they are on now just for an example a and a and b are enemies okay i'm just saying this one for an example a and b are enemies a and c are enemies so automatically which two will become friends here a and b enemies a and c enemies yes b and c right because for both of them the same enemy so they two will become friends same thing happened here right the portugal's enemies also the holland the spain's enemy also the holland so now the portugal and spain they became the friends so soon after the inheritance of the philip the second what did he do he prohibited the dutch to arrive the lisbon harbor right he said the dutch could not further enter to the lisbon harbor to obtain the goods right so now the dutch ships could not enter to the lisbon harbor now how to now the dutch needed the spices they needed the commodities right so because of that one they had no option 
other than finding the routes to these asian countries because now they are depend on this portugal but if they could find a route to the asia they don't you know they don't need to be depend to these countries they can directly go and obtain the goods so because of this only right they had no alternative other than reaching the asia where spices and commodities were provided so this is the reason why the dutch wanted to arrive to asia okay children is it clear is this part clear to you guys yes very good right okay so this is the reason so now you have to keep it in your mind if you get a question right if you get a question like what made the dutch to arrive to asia means you have to tell this story okay right okay can you see the world map right so children there you can see right uh, you can see where the portugal is right where the lisbon harbor is where the spain where the holland is located right the other side you can see some of the important countries in uh asia they are india sri lanka and just have a look at that java islands also because we are going to learn further about it right so just uh, you should know where are the java islands located also okay children so i think that you are clear with that one so now let us move to the next part right okay now you know what this portuguese are they are no right they had a fear right they had a fear that any time right any time this any of the other western nations they could find the route to the asia imagine children now other nations if they get to know the route to the asia means what will happen they will also come to the asia they will start to obtain the goods so the trade monopoly which had in the hands of the portuguese it will go to the other european nations also isn't it so because of that one this portuguese they have taken the steps to prevent the knowledge right to prevent the knowledge about the sea routes to asia from being passed to other european nation until a century okay until a century passed since their arrival in asia so they were so they were so protected that how they are reaching the asia none of the nations could know that one because if they get to know it will become a major problem to this portuguese but you know what happened the dutch right the dutch you know that one the dutch now they have no options right they should definitely find out the route to the asia yes now what they did was right uh they did not uh, at the same time children during that period the portuguese they did not allow a single dutch right english at the same time the french any of these nation to right uh, uh, enter to their uh, ships right but however right however the dutch succeeded in discovering the sea route to asia by about 1595 
by employing spies, right? The Dutch, right? However, by employing the spies, you know, right? Whom we call them as spies, right? We say spy camera, yeah. Because uh, now, if, let's say now I want to now I am only a Dutch person, right? I'll say I'm a Dutch. Uh, soldier. Now I want to know how these Portuguese are entering to the, how they are going to the Asia. Now when I wanted to know, I am dressing up like a Dutch, uh, sorry, I am dressing up like a Portuguese uh, a navigator or else a Portuguese trader like that. I am dressing up and somehow I am entering to their ship. Right. So when they are going to the Asia, now I am finding the route to the Asia. So that is we call that the uh, spies. Right. So by employing the spies, finally the Dutch succeeded in finding the route of Asia. Okay. Right. So after they found the route to the Asia, what has happened? Many Dutch companies, it was not only one, it was not only two, it was not only three. There were many companies, right? Many Dutch companies, they arrived to Asia. They arrived to Asia. However, now the competition started among these Dutch companies itself. Not the Dutch or any other nation. With the, not, uh, the, the Dutch companies, I told many companies, they try to, uh, they arrive to Asia. Now the competition started among these companies itself. So now the Dutch government realized that if there is, right, if there are controversies in between their companies itself, they can't get the trade monopoly of the Asia, so that the Dutch government decided to give a legal authority, to give a legal authority to one company, right? To give the legal authority to one company on behalf of Dutch to engage in the trading activities in Asia. So I told you, right, there were a number of companies, Dutch companies, that finally the Dutch ruler, he went to, went on to amalgamate, right, by uniting, amalgamate all the companies, several Dutch trading companies, and he formed the Dutch, the Dutch, right, the Dutch East, the Dutch East, India Trade Company, right? The Dutch, the Dutch East India Trade Company, or else the VOC Company. So VOC is uh, that is in the Dutch language, my dear children. I will show you how it is. It is in the Dutch language. So the Dutch East India Trade Company, right? They have formed, they have established, right, to engage in the trading activities in Asia on behalf of whom, my dear children? A legal authority means a Zainab. Now, let us say, now the Dutch government only, now they have the power. So, they are giving legally, officially, they are giving the permission. Okay, on behalf of them, this Dutch East India Trade Company can engage in the trading activities in Asia. Okay, so tell me what is the company that they have established by amalgamating all the Dutch companies, my dear children? The Dutch is India Trade Company. For that only we call as the VOC company also. Okay, clear? So this, the, this English East India, uh, sorry, the Dutch East India Trade Company, they had the power, right? They had the power to engage, to engage, to engage in trading activities, 
trading activities trading activities on behalf of whom on behalf of whom on behalf of whom children yes on behalf of on behalf of which government on behalf of which government on behalf of which government yes on behalf of the dutch right to engage in trading activities on behalf of the dutch okay and they have the right they have given the right to conquer the areas conquer the areas right they can build the fortresses they can build the fortresses right and they can appoint the governors they can appoint the governors they can appoint the governors to rule the relevant areas so these are the right the powers granted to the dutch east india trade company by the dutch government okay okay right this is their logo right okay so this is all about how they right conquer the areas means children capturing the areas okay capturing the areas conquering the areas means you know right when they come to asia they are going to capture the sri lanka or india or many other countries so that we say as the conquer the areas so up to this are you clear my dear children up to this are you clear yes good right okay so after the year 16 to the voc company right the voc company they grew financially stable right they became powerful after they arrived to asia so the dutch were able to send very powerful fleets of ships to asia right the dutch who arrived to asia in this manner later on they established their headquarters in the place called where batavia batavia in java islands where children they established their headquarters in a place called batavia in the java islands okay so the dutch who arrived to the asia in this manner they became very good competitors to whom to whom they good they became a very good competitors to the portuguese yes very good okay right so up to this i hope that you are clear right children have you got your pews yes okay now take out your tute okay some of you have not got ah uh, it's okay right those who have uh those who have got the tutes right you can answer for the first 10 questions up to what we have studied so far you will be able to answer for the first 10 questions okay 
So since uh, some of you don't have, uh, right. You can, wait, I'll share. Okay, those who don't have the tutorials, no problem. Now, what we studied through that one, up to uh, question number 10, you will be able to answer. Okay? Right, I'll give you two minutes of time. Can you please uh, go through the tutorial? and we'll discuss the answers within two minutes, okay? Okay, children, shall we discuss because we have a limited time. So we'll quickly discuss. Okay, right. Name the mother country and main religion of the Dutch. Okay, so what is the mother country? It is Holland. And what is the main religion of the Dutch? It is, yes, the Protestantism. Yes, or else we say Protestants. Good. Right. In the 16th century, under which country was the motherland of the Dutch? Under which nation? Yes, very good. Spain. Right. Third one. What was the market from which the Dutch obtained Asian trade items in the 16th century situated? Yes, the Port Lisbon. Lisbon Harbor. Okay, good. Fourth one, who forbade the Dutch from coming to Lisbon Harbor? Yes, good, right? King Philip the II of Spain. Good, good, very good. Right, next one. What was the reason that made the Dutch seek a route to Asia? So there are children. You can write, okay? Yes. Yes, very good. To obtain the spices and other trading items from Asia necessary for trading. Yes, to obtain the spices and other commodities. Very good. Right. So what is referred to as VOC? The Dutch East India Trading Company. Yes, good girl. Right, good girl. Right, next question. When was it established and explain how it was established? So when was it established? In 1602, yes. And how it was established? By, yes, by amalgamating all the Dutch companies. Good, good. Right. Now, the next one, what were the powers of the VOC? Right. I just few minutes ago, I write it down every powers. Right. 
they can engage in trading activities in asia they can build the fortresses they can appoint the governors they, they can rule the relevant areas right next one okay name the place where the headquarters of the dutch was established that is it yes batavia in java island right okay so what are the areas in which the dutch first established their power right for that one east asian countries so many coastal areas in the east asian countries children okay they are only they have first established their power yeah close to java island so that is east asia right so mostly the east asia and in the several location in the uh, coastal areas of india okay right now let us move to the next right now the next topic is children the kandian king seeking the support of the dutch right okay now let us see why this kandian kings are seeking the support of the dutch for what reason they are seeking the support of the dutch now let us have a look at that okay right now children there was a dutch admiral right there was a dutch admiral name joris van spelbergen who joris van spelbergen spelbergen right he reached the eastern coast of sri lanka with three ships and landed to patikolo and then he met the he is meeting at the time he met whom at the time the kandian kingdom was ruling by a great ruler vimala dharma surya the one right vimala dharma surya one right vimala dharma surya one so joris van spilger spilberger he was meeting vimala dharma surya one so at the time at the time when joris van spilberger meeting the vimala dharma surya he was highly disappointed right he was highly disappointed why did he was disappointed because of the activities of because of the activities of who yes because of that activities of the portuguese right so the vimala dharma surya the one was totally disappointed so the king agreeing right to joris van spilberger to get the assistance from the dutch to drive the portuguese from this country so vimala dharma surya is deciding right at that time he decided to get the assistance from this dutch to chase the portuguese from this country okay so after right after this spilberg and left after another 3 months another delegation is coming to sri lanka right that is also to the kandian kingdom that was headed by another dutch admiral name right a captain name seabold seabold d wit right seabold d wit so he was also coming after the three months this uh, joris van spilbergen left another dutch admiral he was coming to meet who to meet king vimala dharma surya one right when the uh, our when the king got to know that this seabold d wit also from the same dutch right he welcome seabold d wit very enthusiastically right he welcome this uh, uh, delegation with very happily with enthusiastically the king invited them so both the parties they had a discussion
discussion right both the parties they had a discussion right now what has happened later on what has happened later on after some time this seabold david he had spoken and he had acted in a disrespectful manner right disrespectful manner to the king so because of that one dispute started in between the candians and the seabold david finally seabold david killed by the kingsman right so after this incident the king gave up the idea of getting the assistance from the dutch to chase the portuguese out of the island right so this was the conversation this was the uh, the relationship right this was the uh, end of this meetings of joris van spilberger and seabold david now after king vimala dharma surya after king vimala dharma surya who was becoming the king of kandian kingdom yes king senara right king senara he was becoming the king of kandian kingdom right so after he become the king of kandian kingdom right he also had discussions with two delegations of the dutch but that also and ended as a unsuccessful one right now after the death of king senara his son who is his son prince maha astana prince maha astana right he was becoming the king of kandian kingdom in the name of rajasinghe rajasinghe to he was not like his father right he was a great warrior rajasinghe the two was a great warrior so his sole desire was chasing the portuguese out of the island yes he was so brave and determined right his sole desire was to chase the portuguese out of the island so he was deciding to get the support of the dutch right who had a strong naval power at that time to chase the portuguese out of the island so imagine children if the dutch is giving their support to the kandian kings means do uh, have, will they do in free of charge without any expectation do you think that they would no definitely no right they would have expected something so in return right now the rajasinghe he is agree right to give the monopoly of cinnamon trade of sri lanka and the harbor in the eastern coast to of sri lanka to the uh, dutch uh, in return for the support they are going to give for the, to drive the portuguese out of the island so anyhow now both the parties rajasinghe the second the dutch right both the parties they are entering into the agreement and finally they are launching several attack right they are launching the several attack on the portuguese finally right the portuguese were uh, the dutch and surrounded the portuguese in which place in batticolo firstly they are attacking the the fort in batticolo so the portuguese they were unable to face the attacks of these finally they are leaving the batticolo and then 
these Dachan, the Candians, they are experiencing the victory. So after this one, the king was so happy. Right? He believed that, okay, the Dutch is so powerful. He believed that one. And finally, he was entering into a treaty in 1638 with King Raja Singha the two. So that treaty is very, very important in the history of Sri Lanka. So what are the, right? What are the clauses in that treaty? Number one, right? Number one, the Dutch agreeing, the Dutchies, right? The Dutch, they are agreeing to, the Dutch agreeing to chase the, whom? The Portuguese, right? So, the Dutch agreeing, the G Dutch agreeing, to support the king, to support the king, it to drive, to drive the Portuguese, Portuguese from the Sri Lanka, from the country. And then, secondly, the king agreed to settle by way of providing the Dutch commodities, such as, now the king agreeing, right? I'll, I'll write it shortly, children. The king agreeing, right? To provide what? Cinnamon, pepper. The amount that the Dutch would spend on the battles against the Portuguese, right? So the Dutch agreeing to, to settle, to settle, by way of, by way of providing, right? Providing the Dutch, the Dutch with commodities such as cinnamon, pepper, all, right? Okay. Then, granting the Dutch monopoly, of collecting the commodities from the Candian areas, except for elephants, that is the third one, right? Granting the Dutch, the monopoly, right? Of collecting the, collecting the commodities, collecting the, commodities, right? Fourth one only very, very important, right? Uh, yes, my dear, this year is very important. 1638 year, you remember, that is important. Okay, right. Fourth close only, very, very important, children. Why it is important? If the king wished to do so, if king wished, the Dutch army can deploy at the fortresses, right? That would be captured from the Portuguese. But if king wished only, with the desire of the king only, they could do that one. So that is what the fourth clause is very, very important. So agreeing, agreeing to deploy, Right? If the king wished, if the king wished, if the king wished, the Dutch army, the Dutch army, the Dutch army at the, at the forts, at the forts, that would be that would be capture that would be capture from the portuguese from the portuguese so this final clause is very very important right this final clause is very very important okay so now 
who are the two parties entering into this right who are the two parties entering into this agreement tell me children who are the two parties dutch and very good the dutch and raj singh her two right now they are entering into the agreement now they are very clear with the agreement now right with the power they are going to attack whom they are going to attack whom they are going to attack whom yes the portuguese right they are going to attack the portuguese right now let us see how they are attacking right so uh now after they entered into the treaty also it took nearly another 20 more years to chase the portuguese from this country so after 1638 means another 20 years took so nearly like 1658 only completely they were able to chase the portuguese out of the island okay right so there were many fortresses under the portuguese right so what are the fortresses trincomalee right trincomalee is one of the most important harbor in our country right next is the nigambu next is what children the nigambu right third one gol third one gol fourth one kalutara right fourth one kalutara fifth one kalambu kalambu right and then manna and then manna and then jaffna right okay all these forts were under the whom the portuguese power so how to capture these fortresses from the portuguese only the task right this is the task that the dutch army the dutch army as well as our candian army had right the candian army and the dutch army to the, together they wanted to attack these fortresses from the portuguese and they wanted to capture it to them okay right now children first the dutch is capturing the trincomalee and nigambu harbor after they captured these two harbors the controversy is erupting right after they captured these two trincomalee and nigambu the controversy starting in between whom the conflict starting in between whom right in between the in between the dutch and the king why why is the controversy is because they were united they were unitedly working and they were able to capture these two harbors the, the fortresses then why because what do you know the dutch were so smart right whatever the areas right that were more advantages for them they did not take any steps to hand over those fortresses to the king according to the agreement how they should have acted after they captured these fortresses they should have handed over that to the king even if even if it is not means they should have asked the permission from the king and if king wished they could have used that one but did they do like that did they ask from the king no they totally forgot about that agreement right they started violating the agreement now right so after they captured right these two fortresses from the portuguese they did not 
hand over them to the king. Right? So, that's what I said. The Dutch, they were so smart. Right? So, they acted forgetting the clause in the agreement. So, the Dutch, without consulting the king, they deployed their army at the fortresses they captured from the Portuguese. Because, now after that, they captured the Gaul also. Right? They failed to give, right after they kept over that to the, they, uh, they hand over that to the, uh, they did they did not hand over that to the king right okay so because of this right uh, the conflict started so now what are the fortresses captured by the uh, uh, dutch army from the portuguese trincomalee nigambu and gaul so why especially they did not like to hand over these areas to the king? Because these areas are abundance with cinnamon, right? They were abundance in cinnamon. So they did not like to give that to the king. Okay, right. Uh, Asya miss? Asya means idea. Asya means idea. Okay. Right. Let we'll continue. Uh, right. So now the goal. Trincomalee, Nigambu, Gaul. Now all these three fortresses, they have captured and then now they were failing to hand over that to whom? To the? To whom? They were failing to hand over that to whom? To the king. Yes. Right. Now the king was upset. Right? The king was upset now because this Dutch, they were violating the agreement. The king was so upset. So he got anger and what did he do? Right? He refused to pay the salaries of the workers in the fortresses saying that this was not my responsibility. Right? Asya Miss, can you hear me? Uh, yes, miss. Ah, okay, miss. Uh, you can talk. Hi, students. Uh, so I'm Asya Ali here. So I just wanted to inform you all now, if you all are interested to join Rifka Misses class, so you can leave me a message uh, to this number so I can uh, give you the details like how to join and how to enter our website. So you don't need to worry if you find difficult to enter our website. We will be helping you throughout step by step. And uh, we will also like uh, provide you like assistance. If you can't do it by yourself, we will do it by ourselves. Like we will uh, enter you to our website by ourselves and give you the password and email so that uh, you can uh, join and continue with the Mrs. class. So, uh, so if you are interested, uh, just uh, leave me a message uh, to this number 076 993 4070. So, I'll send a message. Uh, Rifka, Miss, can you write the number on the board if yeah, you don't I mean, mind? Yeah, yeah, yes, Miss. 076-993-993-4070. Okay. 
Thank you, Miss. So, students, you can leave a message to these WhatsApp numbers, or we will be helping you step by step how to enter the website, what where you should pay, how to enter the receipt. So, everything we will be providing you step by step. Uh, and uh, yeah, so if you are interested, please make sure to message this number with your name, grade, and the subject you are interested and the teacher's name. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Miss. Okay, right. So again, we'll back. Uh, we'll get back to our lesson. Right now, children, as I told you, the conflict started in between the Dutch and the king. Right. So now the king got angered towards the Dutch because they started violating the agreement. So they refused to pay the salaries of the workers employed at the fortress saying that it is not my responsibility, right? So the Dutch again, right? They said in response that they could not hand over the fortresses until the king paid the amount they demanded in order to cover up the expenses on the battles they had fought. So one side, the king is refusing to refusing to pay the salaries right salaries to the workers rise to workers of the fortresses the other side the dutch they what did they say they said they are they are not going to they are not going to hand over they are not going to hand over the fortresses that they have captured from the Portuguese until the king pay the expenses that they have spent on the uh, battles that they have fought. So this controversy that erupted between these two parties gradually intensified. However, later on, Raja Singha too, our king, Raja Singha, Raja Singha too, he realized that, right, uh, that he was with the great patience there because he wanted the support of the Dutch to capture the uh, poor, uh, these uh, fortresses, right, because at the time there were few more. Fortresses like Colombo Forts were still under the hands of the Portuguese. So because of that one, our king was, right, acting with great patience, right? So this was, even though they had all these situations, a huge Dutch army, right, a huge Dutch army, they arrived to Lanka, right? They arrived to Lanka under a, a general named Gerard Hull. Right? Gerard Hull. Gerard Hull. Okay? A, great, a huge army arrived to the Sri Lanka. Right? So, the Dutch army, they positioned artillery on high grounds. Right? Artillery means big guns. Right? Yes. So, ha and surrounded the Colombo fort in order to capture it from the Portuguese. Then, pleased with the work, General Half King Raja Singh showed him great respect. And finally, with the Dutch army, with the Dutch army, the Candian King's army also joined, right? Candian King's army also joined, right? So together they attacked the Portuguese, right? Portuguese at the Colombo Fort. Finally, right? Fortresses, right? Finally, the Portuguese became utterly helpless and they surrendered to the Dutch 
handing over them the keys. Okay, so the Dutch who had so far been carrying out their operation from Gaul Fort, they made Kalambu Fort as their headquarters. Right, again, this made right the king to disappoint with the Dutch because again, they are breaking the agreement. They are violating the agreement, right? So anyhow, the king realized that the aim of the Dutch, right, had been to establish their power in the areas which were under the Portuguese rule, right? But it was not his objective. He, what was his objective was to get the assistance from the Dutch and to chase the Portuguese out of the island. But later on, he realized that the Dutch had come to, Dutch had arrived to this country, right, in the form of helping the Candian king, not actually to help the Candian king, but to establish their power in the Sri Lanka. So later on, king realized that without uh, getting it worse, Many of the areas, other than these fortresses, many of the other areas which were under the Portuguese, the Raja Singh the too, was able to capture them and annex them with the Candian kingdom and he extend his ruling area. Okay. However, a similar European nation was brought to the country in the place of Portuguese. So, because of this only, a Singhala proverb, right? A Singhala proverb. What is created here? What is that Singhala? Inguru? Inguru? T? Miris? Gatta? Vage. That means what? Exchanging. Like exchanging. Like exchanging ginger. Like exchanging ginger for chili. Right? So, children, the Portuguese, now the Candians. Right, they have brought another, they replaced another nation, right, which was more powerful than the Portuguese. So that is Dutch. So that this proverb created in our history, that is Inguru Di Miris Gattavage. We say that like exchanging ginger for chili. Okay, so this is how the Dutch capturing the coastal areas of Sri Lanka, which were under the Portuguese. Okay, children? Right. So, did you understand the lesson, children? Did you understand the lesson? Yes. Okay. Are you guys satisfied? Was it? Interesting. Was it clear to you all? Yes. Yes. Good. Right. Okay. So shall we again, uh, shall we look at the field? We have some more remaining questions we have. History you want to enjoy and you have to study children. These are very nice stories, right? So when you listen to the story, see when you watch a movie, right? You will never feel bored because why? You were that interested to know what will happen next, what will happen next. So same thing only you have to apply when you study the history, my dear children. 
right you should have that interest right when you enjoy your lesson automatically the names the years the incidents the important events everything will stick to your mind so enjoy studying history okay never ever get bored with the history history is a very interesting subject right but you have to love it right you have to love it and you can easily obtain very good marks okay yes so you have to enjoy it you have to enjoy it. okay children now i'll give you 5 uh, minutes of time just complete the rest of the question children then we can have a discussion So children, if you want to join the uh, classes, you can contact the Sateha College, right? So I'll be covering, as I told you, uh, the Grade Nine syllabus is very important syllabus. So I will be covering as much as uh, the most important lessons. We'll try to cover. Uh, uh, that is not an issue because. Uh, we have to because in this one we have some of the important lessons like uh, the second one the british power in sri lanka which is a very important lesson and it will be uh, again repeating to you in grade 11 also right and then the independence movement of india right that is also one of the most important lesson in uh, here because when you understand the independence movement of india then it will be very easy to understand the independence movement of sri lanka as well right so we have another three more months and within that month i'll try to cover the important lessons in your syllabus Okay, children. Shall we? Shall we discuss the questions? Okay. Right up to ten, we have. Right. Okay. So the eleventh one. Right. Let us go to the eleventh one. Uh, who was the first Dutch national to come to Sri Lanka? Right. Who was? Who was the first Dutch national? Yes, Johnny Swan, Spielbergen, right? In which year did he come, and how did he come? He came in sixteen two with three fleet of ships. Yes, okay. 
so that is the 11th question and then in which place did he land in which place did he land yes he landed in batiklo right next one mention why he came and the person he met right why did he come he came to meet the king of kandy and he met king vimala dharma surya the one right next one who was the second dutch national who came to meet king vimala dharma surya one that is sibaldi wit how was the second dutch national received by the king and what was his title right so they are he welcomed with enthusiasm right so uh, but later on it ended he uh, their dispute arose which led to his death so who became the king after king vimala dharma surya the one that was king senarat name king rajasinghe to his father right that is only king senarat again then describe how king rajasinghe to acted to expel the portuguese from the country you have to write he had the discussions with the representatives of the eastern headquarters of the dutch in batavia to get their support the king agreed to give the dutch the monopoly of the cinnamon trade and a harbor in the eastern coast place to support to expel the portuguese right the next question with whom did king rajasinghe to sign a treaty in 1638 with the dutch right so what are the main points of the treaty you know that one the dutch agreeing to support the dutch agreeing to give the support uh, to expel the portuguese from the country the king agreeing to settle the amount that the dutch would spend on the battle against the portuguese by providing them with commodities such as cinnamon pepper and beeswax granting the dutch the monopoly of collecting the commodities from the candian kingdom except for elephants and then to deploy the dutch army in the fortresses captured from the portuguese if the king desired okay right so the next question how long did it take to expel the portuguese from this country after the treaty of 1638 it took about 20 years yes so name the fortresses captured by the dutch during this period Trincomalee, Nigambu, Gaul, Kalutara, Kalambu, Manna, and Jaffna. And then, what was the reason for the controversies between the king and the Dutch during this period? Because the Dutch did not take steps to hand over the fortresses captured by them. in the areas advantages to them to the king as agreed in the 1638 agreement right next question who is the dutch general who came with the dutch army to assist in the capture of colombo fort general gerald half and then mention the year in which the portuguese rule of the coastal areas ended in 16 58 name the reasons which are uh, which are the last fortresses of the portuguese captured by the dutch were situated they are manna jaffna and kalpitiya so name the main and small fortresses established by the dutch main are kalambu gaul matara nigambu kalpitiya manna jaffna chinkomeli and batikolo and minor ones are Alimangkanda, Point Pedro, and Kites. And the next one, what is the meaning of the proverb like exchanging, like exchanging ginger for chili? That a similar European nation was brought to the country instead of the 
Portuguese. Yes. Okay? Right. Then, children, I hope that uh, you would have today, uh, you would uh, understand the lesson, right? Uh, so I take this opportunity to thank uh, Miss Asia uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, so thank you so much, Miss. And thank you, my dear children. Thank you, Miss.